20, I'm going to reread this paragraph as my last recording cut off in the middle of this paragraph. I'm on page 220 of chapter 14. His fingers met a jagged bit of plaster, and beside it empty space. In an instant he was through the hole and stumbling along the black passage, bent double under its crowding roof, banging and bumping into its raw, rough-hewn walls. So hand-carved walls. But running, flying away from the death behind him, the sounds of rage faded as he ran, grew fainter, with every bend, then suddenly grew louder. The thieves had found the wall opening, too, and were after him. In the passage, he scrambled around a curve, almost fell, dashed on again, and brought up with a stunning impact against solid wall. Walls on three sides of him. Was he trapped? He wasted precious moments seeking a way around the obstruction. Then his hand touched a rough shelf of stone. A step. He had reached the bottom of the entrance shaft much sooner than he had expected, for his headlong flight back had consumed far less time than his first cautious crawling journey. He clawed at the wall, found step after narrow step, and hoisted his trembling body up them one by one. As he put his weight on the last one, it crumbled under him. In a panic, he flung both arms over the top of the shaft, and for a terrible moment hung there, then wriggling, straining, pushing. He was over the top and through the crevice in the rocks. The sunlight hit him like a blow, half blind and shaking all over. He could think only of that last crumbled step. The sunlight hit him like a blow, half blind and shaking all over. He could think only of that last crumbled step and what it could mean to him. The thieves might climb past by jumping and then wriggling as he had done. But they could not get out if the top of the shaft were solidly blocked. They would have nothing to stand on to shove away the stones. He could hear stumbling, rapid footsteps approaching the bottom of the shaft, and Gebu's enraged voice bellowed his name. Renifer! But already he was grabbing up rocks as fast as he could move. His eyes squinted tight against the glare of day. He hurled a few into the shaft and felt a fierce joy at the roar of pain below and the thud of someone falling. Quickly, he wedged some larger stones into the crevice, then began to shove and strain at the biggest, a boulder three times the size of his head, which had originally blocked the entrance. It would not budge. He put his shoulder to it, dug his toes into the hot sands and shoved with all his strength. It stirred a little, tilted. He heard more scrambling sounds below and gave one last desperate thrust. The boulder tipped and rolled across the opening. For a moment he could do nothing but lean upon the boulder and gasp for breath. There was still space behind it, but he could push it no closer. Ammon willing it would delay them a little while, but that was all. He turned and started running across the red wasteland of the valley into the direction, in the direction of the Nile. After the closeness of the tomb, the hot, free wind of the desert poured over him like the breath of life itself. But he could take no joy in it. If only the stone had rolled closer, there would be time to plan, to act in safety. But there was no time. There was nothing but, but more and more danger. Gebu was strong as set himself. Sooner or later, the stone would be tilting, moving, rolling free. <laughs>